now our first speaker will be anchal ma'am uh, she will be talking about what is new educational policy she is a founder of kr mangalam world school faridabad she is teaching social science for standard 6 to 8 she is master in commerce from punjab university and ba from chitkara university anchal ma'am uh, over to you you can take over now thanks radhika for my introduction and it's a pleasure to be with you hello all this is anjal julka god um as radhika told i have done my masters from punjab university ba from chitkara university and masters in economics and as well as in history from madurai kamraj university currently i'm working as a freelancer and i'm almost having four plus years of experience in teaching sst in the reputed schools of delhi ncr and as well as chandigarh so as you all know we are here to discuss about the new education policy so i would like to share my screen with you all let's begin with the new education policy is it uh, visible to everyone uh yes ma'am it's visible it's visible yeah. yeah so the new education policy when it began actually when it all happened in india when it all started we hardly know about it right so it was the first need of this education was felt in 1964 when the congress mp mr siddeshwar prasad criticized the government where we are lacking in the vision and philosophy for our education in the same year the 17 member commission sat together under the chairperson ds kothari this commission is known as the kothari commission and based on the suggestion of this commission the parliament passed our first education policy which is in the year 1968 under indira gandhi and then the second education policy was passed in 1986 somehow this policy which was passed in 1986 it was revised in 1992 under pv narasimha rao when he was the president and now we are having the third education policy under the prime minister ship of shri narendra modi as we begin with this policy what is this policy what this policy discuss upon like each and every policy has various amendments various visions so every policy come with amendment so what about this policy this envision so if we'll discuss at the school level if we see at the school level the structure we are following till now it's 10 plus 2 till 10 and then we have plus 1 and plus 2 the age group were 6 to 18 years but now this policy has been amended which says the structure the educational structure which should be 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 it should be designed according to it and the first Three to eight years. The first five years are the foundational stage of a child, where we have to mold the child like we mold a pot. We have to mold a child according to its needs. He is a quite small child. If you mold a child, he will get molded as per his needs. And the second stage comes from eight to eleven years. That is the preparatory age, from grade third to grade fifth. After that, we have. a middle age that is from 6th to 8th standard that is from 11 years to 14 years where you can provide the vocational training also to the students you don't only have to focus on the rote memory we have to focus on the practical thinking also Be because the practical thinking is going to help to be a successful person in a coming future rote memory is not going to help a child and the next one is the 14 to 18 years that is the secondary level that is the 9 starting from 9th grade to 12th grade where they can take up the subjects of their choice it is not necessary if a child is in science he will only study pcm they can take other subjects also if i am in plus 2 i'll prefer to take physics as well as i'm good in business studies also so i can take up both the subjects it is not necessary if i am in medical i'll only go for pcm i can go for business physics business studies like it is happening in other countries also other countries they prefer they give up the choice to you in subjects starting from grade 9 so in 9 10 you 11 12 you take up your choice subjects this is at the school level and the emphasis we have given in this policy is the teaching should be in mother tongue up to grade 
why it is required that the teaching should be in mother tongue or in the regional language of the student because it is very easier for a child to learn or to understand in their own language rather than english studying in english you should be bilingual in your teaching but sometimes this question arises what about those people those who are in a transferable job or those who are having multilingual to parents suppose if i am residing in north india and my parents get transferred to south india but i don't know how to speak kannada or tamil i don't know so what about that in that case the work is increased for a teacher the teacher needs to be bilingual she should use both the languages in her class if i am teaching in kannada so i'm supposed to be teach in kannada as well as the language which should be understood by another children it can be english it can be hindi the work of a teacher is increasing over here she needs to be bilingual if you are in a school in north india it is preferred you should go for hindi and as well as your regional language or some other language which is easily understood by the student the point is nap what about the nap this is we are talking about till school level right we are using bilingual languages so what about the nap at the higher level so we have introduced the four multidisciplinary undergraduate program it is a four years program the four year program says that the student can exit after one year in case there is some emergency in a student's home he can't continue his education due to some personal reasons or he has to take up the family responsibility he can he can exit the course after one year but he will get a certificate for that in case he exits his a uh, program after 2 years he will get a diploma for that but in case he will complete 3 years or 4 years of degree he will get a degree earlier in our cases it was like we have to uh, dedicate our full 3 years to our education to our post graduate program or graduate program we can't exit in between but now according to this policy we have given the government has given you an option to exit the program as per your requirement the next is the discontinuation of a mphil program mphil is the masters in philosophy basically mphil is a research degree when you have completed your post graduate course and you are going to pursue the phd it is between people used to go for mphil rather than going to phd but the government has said or this policy has said that we will discontinue mphil program we are directly converting it to a phd if you have to do mphil you will not do mphil you will opt for directly phd complete your masters complete your post graduation and directly go out for the phd it has been phased out mphil degree has been phased out in favor of direct phd program it also sweep the changes including opening up of indian higher education to foreign universities we have taken up this that the in the, the foreign university can place can set up in india this is not the clear part which is given by the government either they will give them a land to set up their universities or we will do a tie up or we'll merge with them some universities are not ready to enter indian uh, india or take up indian students but few are ready for that so the clear picture is not given about that opening up of higher education to foreign universities so it needs time to come up and the next one is the dismantling of the ugc and all india council for technical education it has been dismantled whenever you have to set up a university you have to need the accreditation from ugc you have to need a tradition from all india council for technical education but now it has been dismantled and has been merged into a single body there is no that you have to go separately for each and every accreditations the next policy it phases out of a offering institutions offering single stream like if i take an example of iit iits have started with the humanities also the it will phase out those in you know uh, uh, sorry those colleges or those institution those who are only offering a single stream only iit or only medical no this way student will be stick to only iit now what government is doing they are taking a phase out and they will offer other streams also like humanities iit can offer humanities or they can set up a different department a public department for them i have given you an example over here of iit delhi as iit delhi has set up 
IIT Delhi has set up a separate department, a separate humanity department, and as well as a public policy department for the students. If they are interested in that, they have to take up the subject. They can go for that. And next is the IIT Kharagpur. It has taken up the school for medical science and technology. Right. So it will not. We are not sticking to one particular stream. We are giving a wide option to our generation, to our coming generation, so that. they can get more options more vocational training it will help them to be a better citizen and we are opening up the job opportunities for them we are not sticking that if you have done bcom you will have to be then the, then you have to do mcom and you'll have to do b ed or you have a limited sources with you you don't have to you can go for a wide options if you have done bcom or might be you have taking up the different subjects you have taken up physics as well you have taken accountancy also but you are good in physics and you feel that you have to go for physics so you can go in that line you can be a physicist you can go to an astronomer right so it is according to me this policy is going to help the coming generation because it will give them a wide option they will not stay to one particular stream thank you all over to radhika thank you anshul ma'am for such an insightful discussion